Hello my fellow patriots, this is Alex with another Disabled Vets Perspective. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit today about our medical system. It's not for you and me, it's for illegals and uh, the elites. So, how I know that? Well, when I had started doing these videos, I didn't think things were going to come quite as close to home as they did when I did my video about my cousin taking his life and the veterans doing that on a regular basis, I was a little surprised that it hit that close. And uh, again, I'm dealing with the same thing. <clears throat> My daughter is very sick, uh, potentially cancer. And uh, she was at the emergency room and they drew some blood, did the things that they had to do and said, yes, there is definitely a problem and told her that she needs to go see a specialist. Well, she got emergency Medicaid because she doesn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of like most of us working poor do. So they gave her emergency Medicaid. So she got a hold of a specialist that would be willing to see her with using Medicaid. Well, when she went to that specialist, she was told she had a $2,200 outstanding bill and that she would have to pay that before they could see her. Well, we uh, dealt with that, and my, uh, my mother actually got involved and helped us out, and she called the hospital and said, just what the hell is going on? Well, the Cancer Institute at the hospital returned a call and said that they don't turn people away and that if she contacts her, then she'll get her a official diagnosis, and then they'll start the next step. Well, the first line, they don't turn people away. Well, that is not true. They do turn people away. When my wife was going through a bad time, she was facing back surgery, we were going through the process of seeing a uh, specialist. Well, we ended up with a bill that was couple thousand dollars and I was in between jobs because with my broken back and fighting the VA I went through hundreds of jobs because I'd work for a little while my back would go out I'd lay up in bed and be done for a couple of weeks and then try to get up and do it again so I went through hundreds and hundreds of jobs well this time when we went to do the appointment they said oh you have a outstanding bill we can't see you until that's covered well, we went downstairs, and we talked to them at billing, and they said, well, if you can show a promissory note of some sort that you plan on paying for this bill, then we can send you back upstairs and you see your specialist. Well, I had $60 to my name, period. And I gave her all 60 and I said, now, can we go to this appointment? And they said, yes, absolutely. Well, we went to that appointment. But the point is, they do turn people away. It's happened twice within my own family. And uh, something's got to change about this because if my daughter threw away her passport, went on down there to Texas, jumped across to the Mexican border in one of those wide open spaces and then came back across, she would have everything without question. She'd have housing. Her kids would be taken care of. She would have a, an income to help her out while she's trying to build herself up with work. And at this point, work is going to be a non-starter for her because she's pretty ill. But the point is, if she got rid of all of her documents and came across the border, she would have no question everything would be covered. And the, uh, the illegals and the elites have it made. The elites have Cadillac packages. They, they don't pay for anything. They don't even pay a, a uh, what do they call that, a per diem or a uh, copay of any kind. They go in, they get seen, they come out. That's it. The illegals same way so if you're an illegal or an elite medical is for you it's not for the work, working poor like the rest of us and one thing my father was in the navy he was a physician he chose the navy because he couldn't in his heart find a good reason to charge people to save their lives so if i was to say i had any socialist tendencies whatsoever i would say that it would be for the medical system because I'm one of those also, like my father, that believes that nobody should have to pay or make that decision if they pay a bill or if they want to live. And they, 
the big question is everybody throws that fear tactic. How do we pay for it? Well, we have trillions of dollars going to other countries to take care of their citizens. We pay astronomical amounts of money for medications. And you think that's an accident? Absolutely not. We pay a fortune for medication so that the other countries can pay less. We pay their supplements. We, we pay their copay, so to speak. So when you have a, uh, another country, like I lived in Turkey for a year. I loved it. Beautiful place. Great people. I lived there for a year. My son was fighting with asthma. And actually it started to clear up over there. But once we got over there, we realized that we just made an 11 hour flight and left his inhaler sitting on the tray table right by the front door as we were on our way out because he had, to, he had to take a couple of puffs on the way out the door. Well, we got to Turkey and he was huffing and puffing and wheezing like a steam engine and we were freaking out because we didn't know what to do. Well, ran into a guy and he says there's a pharmacy right down the street. So we hustled down there, left my son with my mom and dad so they could watch him and try to keep him breathing. We got there and ran inside and said, we need an inhaler. I don't have a script for it. And they said, you don't need a script. And I said, well, I've, I've got some money, you know, I pay for it. And they said, oh, okay, how many do you need? And I said, well, I can't afford more than one, I, I believe. And she comes back and says, okay, well, that's 30 karush, which is about 15 cents. Well, it's about 12 cents. So for a, what we paid for here was about... 180 something dollars for a uh, albuterol inhaler when we went to Turkey we paid 12 cents so we went, went ahead and got a dozen of them and by the time we were there for several months his asthma was easing up and I, I really believe it was the the clean air the 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 lack of chemicals in the water the all the things that we have going on here well he cleared up so we ended up bringing home unused inhalers when we came home after the year but the point I'm making is the medical doesn't have to be this high if somebody big pharmaceutical big government lobbyists they decide that we need to pay 50 to 60 dollars for a Tylenol in the emergency room and uh, you know everybody does it okay yeah I'm you know it was an emergency room visit so I'll pay my 50 bucks well, if they would just bring the medical down to a reasonable cost instead of saying, oh, well, we can't afford it because medical is too high. Well, bring your damn medical down. Bring it to a normal level. If you have to take a Tylenol in, in the uh, emergency room, then they crack open a $3 bottle of Tylenol from the store. You take two of them, they charge you two or three cents, maybe five cents, so they pay for the walking back and forth with the nurse. But if we brought the medical down to a reasonable cost, then it is affordable because we're already paying for it. We're just paying for it for other countries. But uh, anyway, this is about getting our system to work for us. And we can afford socialist medicine. It's not going to be run like a, the VA or it's an absolute failure. But if they brought the medical down, if they quit supplying every other country in the world with premium medical at our expense, then we would be able to afford it. And we're working on this thing right now, trying to get this uh, bill situation taken care of for my daughter. She has gotten some support from, a, from the uh, cancer team at the hospital, so they're saying that if, they, if she can get her records, then... They'll get her officially diagnosed, and then they'll start this process. So we're working on that. But the point of this video is everything that we pay for, we're paying for for somebody else. And if we just concentrated on paying for it for ourselves, then we could survive this thing. We could afford medical. And medication, it doesn't have to be that high. We pay a fortune for it so that other countries don't. And Anyway... That's kind of what I got for now. And this, this is a spooky world out here. You have to choose if you want to pay your bills or live your life. 
and it's a little unfair, but we shouldn't worry. Uh, the illegals and the elites are well taken care of, so we shouldn't bitch. But the other thing is, I wanted to mention, I have tried to go do live shows, and I live out here in the country, and our internet is brought in on horse, horse-drawn buggy, and it's put out by homing pigeons, so my uplift is minimal, and my streaming capability is about as useless as tits on a chicken. So eventually I'll upgrade my equipment. Um, I don't want to ask anybody for money. I've never been that way. And, you know, so I'm, I do it as I can afford it. But I do have a PayPal, and if you want to, if you want to help me out, then I would be eternally grateful. But I would never ask for anybody to support me. I've just never been born that way. That's not the way I was raised. I've worked full time since I was 12. I've done it for myself. So, that being said, if you guys like what I have to say, make sure you hit that like button and maybe it'll stick. Maybe it won't. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends about me and uh, hit that little bell. I think mine's got a crack in it because people don't get my notifications that regularly. And, you know, we'll see what we can figure out in this whole medical scheme of things. But until next time, you know what you got to do. Stay in the fight.